led by Heisman Trophy winner Joe Burrow and his record-setting golden arm. It was pretty damn perfect. What the champs are saying this morning right here on GMA. Impeachment showdown. Nancy Pelosi meeting with Democrats behind closed doors this morning, paving the way for a Senate trial. As a new report out showing Russian hackers targeting the Ukrainian company at the center of the impeachment controversy. Debate showdown. As the top six Democratic candidates prepare to face off tonight, the battle behind the scenes. Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren clashing over her claims that Sanders allegedly said he didn't think a woman could win the presidency. Baseball bombshell. Houston Astros hit with a massive punishment, accused of cheating their way to a World Series victory. Why the Red Sox and their manager could be next. Wicked weather. 30 cars spinning out in separate crashes out west and an EF-1 tornado wreaking havoc in South Carolina. Now 13 states on alert as that major storm bringing heavy snow, rain and ice moves east. Deadly sinkhole. The stunning scene caught on camera overseas, a bus completely swallowed. And royal crisis inside the extraordinary summit with the queen. The new details and why Duchess Meghan did not join the call and the real meaning behind the queen's message this morning. Live in Times Square, this is Good Morning America. And good morning, America. Hope you're well this Tuesday morning. It is a busy one, especially in the U.S. Capitol. Take a look right now. House and Senate busy behind the scenes, preparing for President Trump's impeachment trial. Key meeting of House Democrats today will pave the way for the Senate trial starting this week. We'll have more on that ahead. And we will. Also this morning, the LSU Tigers, well, they have a lot to celebrate this morning, taking home that big title in college football last night. That man right there, Heisman Trophy winner Joe Burrow. Fans erupting at a game watch in Louisiana. <laughs> yeah. And look, fans are also celebrating in Joe's hometown of Athens, Ohio. You know, I'll get Vegas. Who's got to clean all that up? Yeah. But he, he, he knew he was going to win that ring before the game oh. even ended. He's already getting himself fitted for it. And it was thrilling every step of the way, regardless. LSU overwhelming Clemson, the defending champs, to win the title. And Will Reeve then New Orleans with all the big moments. Good morning, Will. Hey, good morning, Michael. There was a thick fog in the city yesterday, but by the end of the night when the confetti settled on the turf of the Superdome, it was clear the storybook ending for the LSU Tigers had been written. The T-shirt here, the national championship T-shirt that I picked up on the field, says it all. Coach O, Joe Burrow, Louisiana State becoming legends in New Orleans. LSU sits on the throne of college football. Overnight, the clash of the Tigers in New Orleans. The college football playoff national championship featuring two undefeateds. Defending champs Clemson led by coach Dabo Sweeney and hometown LSU by one-of-a-kind Louisiana native Ed Orgeron. I grew up wanting to be the head coach at LSU. I'm so proud for the state of Louisiana. We've had support from the governor, from the president, from everybody that loves LSU. President Trump and the First Lady were in the building for college football's biggest night. Orgeron showcasing his legendary passion pregame, accidentally cutting himself on the forehead while firing up his team. But when the game started, Clemson jumped out to an early lead. Breaking tackles, banging our people, touchdown! Clemson stretches the lead, wow! LSU facing a double-digit deficit for the first time all season before taking control in the second quarter and never looking back. With his father, NFL Hall of Famer Randy Moss in the stands, Thaddeus Moss racked up two of the five touchdowns thrown by LSU's superstar quarterback Joe Burrow, the man of the hour delivering a performance for the ages. It says perfect. How does that make you feel? <laughs> it, it, was, it was pretty damn perfect. The 23-year-old Heisman Trophy winner handing Clemson its first loss in two years and winning the duel against his elite counterpart, sophomore Trevor Lawrence, himself unbeaten since high school. Our coaches put together a great game plan at halftime and we started to roll. In front of a joyous Louisiana crowd leading LSU to glory, a national championship. Burrow set all kinds of records this year and threw five touchdowns in the championship game to cap off a season that really can only be described with the word that the advocate in Baton Rouge chose for their cover. Perfect, guys. <laughs> Perfect indeed. My goodness. Thank you, Will.
We're going to move on now to Washington. The next phase of the impeachment showdown is kicking off this morning. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi holding a key meeting with House Democrats to prepare for a vote to send the impeachment articles to the Senate and start President Trump's trial. Our senior congressional correspondent Mary Bruce tracking all the latest on Capitol Hill. Good morning, Mary. Good morning, George. Well, in just a short time, the House Speaker will be huddling here behind closed doors with all House Democrats discussing which members could be prosecuting the case in the, in the, in the Senate and finally deciding when to send over the articles of impeachment, which could happen as soon as today. That then sets off a series of procedural steps, including agreeing on the guidelines in the Senate. We then expect the formal trial to get underway early next week, George. Well, one thing, Mary, that appears to have been dismissed by the Senate Republicans is this idea to dismiss the trial before actually holding arguments. Yeah, George, Republicans we have talked to here simply have no interest in a dismissal. They want a trial in the Senate, and it appears the Republicans don't have the votes to dismiss right now, so it's all a bit of a non-starter. Even though President Trump is pushing it, meantime, lots of focus on whether or not we're actually going to see witnesses at this trial. Yeah, and George, a, a handful of key Republicans say they do want to hear from additional witnesses or at least want a promise now that they will consider those witnesses further down the line. Now, hearing from witnesses would dramatically change the dynamic of the trial in the Senate, and it could make it much longer. But the Republican leader, Mitch McConnell, has made very clear he has no interest in hearing from them. He is looking for a quick acquittal of the president, right, George. Right. The question is, will four Republicans defect? Okay, Mary Bruce, thanks very much, Ronnie. And George, as the impeachment trial gets underway, there is a new report that Russia's military is interfering in our elections again by hacking into the Ukrainian energy company connected to the Biden family. Our chief justice correspondent Pierre Thomas is in Washington with this story and as we all know Pierre the president's push to investigate this company is at the heart of the impeachment proceedings. Indeed, Robin, good morning. That's right. Area One, a security firm based in Silicon Valley, claims the same Russian military unit that targeted Hillary Clinton's campaign has hacked Burisma. That's the Ukraine-based energy company Joe Biden's son, Hunter, was on the board of. The security company claims that the GRU tricked Burisma employees into clicking onto fake websites, giving them a way in. Some are speculating the Russians may have been fishing for damaging information about the Bidens to try to help Trump as they did in 2016. We've not heard back from Burisma, but the Biden campaign emphasizes there's no evidence Hunter Biden did anything wrong and told us last night that the Burisma hack is evidence that Putin sees Joe Biden as a threat and is calling on the White House to condemn the alleged hack, Robin. And Pierre, while we have you, tell us about this other headline with the Department of Justice and Apple. Robin, it's now an open feud. Barr is pressing Apple for a way to access two badly damaged iPhones used by the Pensacola killer who killed those three sailors, including one the suspect intentionally shot a bullet into. Authorities hope to find information on sites he visited and people he may have contacted prior to the terror attack. Barr says Apple has not been helpful and wants them to provide a method to get into all iPhones when law enforcement needs to, to get in there. This morning, Apple is pushing back, saying hacking uh, is a problem, but they've assisted law enforcement extensively from the start, but they have to balance the privacy concerns of customers. Apple fears a backdoor for law enforcement is simply another potential avenue for hackers to take advantage of, Robin. All right, Pierre, thank you. Michael? All right, thank you, Robin. Now to breaking news. Reports this morning that Iran has made arrests after that accidental attack on a passenger plane that killed all 176 people on board. Our senior foreign correspondent, Ian Panel, has the latest. Good morning to you, Ian. Yeah, good morning, Michael. That's right. Iran now confirming that arrests have been made of those involved in the accidental shooting down of that plane. No details, however, of how many or exactly who has been arrested. A reminder that the airline crashed last week shortly after takeoff from Tehran's international airport. Of course, it was brought down after being targeted by anti-aircraft fire. Now, Iran's general staff of armed forces taking full responsibility for the downing, say it was, quote, due to human error and apologizing. And this morning, Iran's President Rouhani admitting that from the get-go he thought the crash wasn't normal, saying, quote, it was painful and unforgivable. Now, this follows a weekend of protests that saw thousands on the streets angry at the regime's handling of this crisis. The judiciary now saying that 30 people were arrested in those protests in which police used live ammunition. George? Yeah, it appeared to be a real threat to the regime. Okay, Ian, thanks very much. We're going to go to the race for the White House now and tonight's final Democratic debate before the first votes in Iowa. Senator Cory Booker, the latest Democrat to drop out of the race, as the remaining candidates prepare for some heated clashes in Des Moines tonight. Lindsey Davis is on the scene, and Lindsey, we're already seeing a skirmish between Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren. 
We certainly are. Good morning to you, George. And the storyline here is interesting. It's not so much a he said, she said as it is his campaign says one thing, her campaign says another. And according to a new national poll, this, the national front runner is still Joe Biden. But many of the headlines are, of course, on Sanders and Warren and a growing rift. The stage is set for a fiery debate tonight here in Iowa as tensions rise between Senators Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders. The campaign's now duking it out over a private conversation in 2018 when Sanders allegedly told Warren a woman can't win. Warren saying in a statement, among the topics that came up was what would happen if Democrats nominated a female candidate. I thought a woman could win. He disagreed. Sanders denies the claims, calling the idea that he would say a woman couldn't win ludicrous, stating, do I believe a woman can win in 2020? Of course. After all, Hillary Clinton beat Donald Trump by 3 million votes in 2016. The Warren campaign also taking issue with a report alleging Sanders volunteers are slamming her as a candidate of the elite, unable to expand the Democratic base. But despite a recent Des Moines Register poll showing Sanders surging to the top in Iowa, a new Quinnipiac poll suggests nationally the candidate to beat is still Joe Biden. Also of note from that Quinnipiac poll of the 35 percent of the people, the people who responded, said that they have made up their minds. The rest say they have no idea, still undecided about who they're going to vote for in the primary. So while there's a lot of focus on Warren and Sanders, remember a total of six candidates on the stage here tonight at Drake University. George, get the popcorn. Yeah, and that's why the candidates actually have to be careful. Iowa voters also have a history of punishing the candidates who get into fights before the caucuses. I know you're going to be there tonight, Lindsay. Thanks it's very certainly much. Certainly true. Yeah, keep all that in mind. All right, George. Now, now to the fallout growing from that World Series cheating scandal enveloping the Houston Astros, and it could also affect the Red Sox. The Astros facing an unprecedented punishment for sign stealing. TJ Holmes is here with all these details. Okay, the 2017 Houston Astros had more wins than any team in baseball. Also that season, they won the World Series. Also in 2017, they cheated the entire season. This is no longer an allegation or speculation. This is the result of, a, uh, of an investigation, also an admission by some members of the team. So what did they do? Stealing signs, that's as old as baseball. Problem is, they did it using a video camera, a monitor, and a trash can. Listen, and you'll hear a loud bang that Major League Baseball says is the sound of cheating. Ball's crushed to left field. Springer has just hit his 31st home run. An MLB investigation has sent shockwaves throughout the sports world. The league says the Houston Astros used an illegal camera-based sign-stealing system during their 2017 World Series winning season, which allowed their hitters to know what pitches were coming. The Houston Astros are world champions. The team's manager and general manager now fired. Here's how it worked. A camera in the outfield stands could see the catcher signal to the pitcher what pitch to throw. An Astros player would then watch that camera feed at this table, then bang on a garbage can, which let the Astros batter know which type of pitch was coming next, leading to hits like these. Altuve, base hit right center. Listen closely for that bang after the catcher's signal. In the air to left. Ben Intendi's going back, and that's going to be a one hopper to the wall. We broke the rules. We accept the punishment. The MLB punishment includes season long suspensions to team manager A.J. Hinch and general manager Jeff Lunau, and a record $5 million fine, sending a message to teams around the league that illegal sign stealing will not be tolerated. Astros team owner Jim Crane went a step further and fired Hinch and Lunau after the suspension was announced. This is a tough day. I've had a lot of tough days over the years. But yeah, this is this is a tough one. The investigation is expected to impact other major league teams as well. Alex Cora, the current manager of the Boston Red Sox, was the bench coach for the 2017 Astros. The MLB commissioner said Cora developed the Astros sign-stealing system. Just one year later, he led the Sox to a World Series title as manager. Boston is now under investigation for illegal sign stealing as well. Baseball's commissioner now says he'll determine the appropriate level of discipline for Cora after the investigation of the Red Sox is complete. 
All right, two big questions everybody's asking. Why weren't players punished? And also, mm -hmm. why not take away the title? So, Manfred says when it comes to players, it's hard to determine what level of culpability each player had. It's hard to decide, or he was more responsible than this guy because they all knew. So that's why they didn't punish any players. Why not vacate the title? Well, because you can't definitively say that that system resulted in a win. So therefore, leave it, let it be. They're gonna keep their banner, but a lot of people are upset about that point. Mm. I, I, but that doesn't make yeah. sense when you're saying it did help them win, and yeah. now then you're saying... Definitively, it's a big deal to take somebody's World Series title away. We watched that World Series. They won. They're a talented bunch. But they're saying we cannot definitively say, so they're but letting But the system is in Houston, then Cora goes to Boston, and they win. Back-to-back -back World Series are now tainted by this scandal. Oh, something seems to be working. Yeah. All right. Thank you, wow. TJ. You wow. Guys, wow. Like We're going to turn now to all the reaction to the Oscar nominations. The Joker walking away with the most nods as outrage, grow, as outrage grows over who didn't make the cut. Amy is here with more. Good morning to you, Amy. Yeah, a lot there's, of controversy. there's a lot of anchor out there, Michael. Good morning. Not only did some big names in Hollywood miss the list, but once again, this has been the story. Female directors were snubbed. For achievement in directing. It's the, the Oscar shutout causing controversy nominee. this morning. All five nominees for best director, male. Congratulations to those men. Presenter Issa Rae's forward reaction going viral. One notable name missing from the list, Little Women director Greta Gerwig. Despite her film getting nominations for Best Picture. This is Meg, Amy, Beth, and Joe. Best Screenplay. My girls have a way of getting into mischief. Well, so do I. Lead actress for Saoirse Ronan. I intend to make my own way in the world. And Best Supporting Actress for Florence Pugh. I believe we have some power over who we love. Pugh called into GMA shortly after the nominations were announced and talked about Gerwig's snub. The script is hard direction is her and, and she's in every single one of these characters so we share it um, and we don't notice it without her I suppose but yeah it's, it's, it's incredibly upsetting you have to think about what uh, Hollywood as an industry considers to be awards worthy what what the tastes are and the tastes still reflect the people who are in charge who are usually white men despite the Academy's recent attempts to diversify its membership critics calling out a lack of inclusivity in Monday's nomination the game is rigged and it does not reward people who play by the rules Jennifer Lopez considered by many a shoe in for a nom for best supporting actress for her performance in hustlers shut out despite booming box office success. Now the awards are just a few weeks away. You can see them right here on ABC on February 9th, but I'm sure we're going to be hearing a lot more about that director category. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Amy, thanks very much. We are following a lot of other stories this morning, including some new details just in on that royal summit with the Queen. Turns out Duchess Meghan did not join the call. We're going to find out why. And Nick Melinda has walked over the Grand Canyon, Niagara Falls, Times Square. Wait till you see what's next. He's going to join us exclusively in our next half hour, but first, let's go to Ginger. Scary morning in Horry County, South Carolina. The images of those cars flipped an EF1 tornado, 90 mile per hour winds, and now a stationary front that could cause big time flooding the next 48 hours. Already saw three to four inches near Yazoo City. Also, Northwest, Pacific Northwest, Seattle had a rough one, Interstate 5 there, uh, and then also on the 520 floating bridge. Your local weather in 30 seconds. First, the Tuesday trivia sponsored by Subaru. Life doesn't give you many second chances. But a Subaru can. You guys okay? You all right? Oh. Eyesight with pre-collision braking. Standard on the Subaru Ascent. The three-row Subaru Ascent. Love. It's what makes a Subaru a Subaru. Another day with temperatures above average, but we've got a weather maker producing some rain showers today, mainly before 1 p.m. 50 degrees there at 4 p.m. with some drizzle and fog around this evening. Then the return of winter starting Friday and check out Saturday. A little bit of uh, wintry uh, weather coming our way with some sleet, some freezing rain, getting a little icy across the area. 37 degrees on Sunday. Stay with Storm 17 on air and online at WJLA.com. We'll keep you updated. your day with us and we'll be right back.
wherever we want to go, we just have to start. Auto save your way there with Chase.